working up to that though, couldn't it, John? See, Ben doesn't have to do that, Reg. He's winning the rounds without wasting any punches. He's so controlled. Wharton's not doing enough work in any of the rounds. The, the only time Wharton's letting punches go is when Ben's already up close, and by that time, Ben has landed a couple of jabs on the way in. Too much of the walk and find left hook, really. It's because he's allowing Ben to lead off all the time. What must do more leading off if he wants to get into this fight. Well, it looks like a barber shop there at the moment, doesn't it? Uh, all quiet calm and collected. Let's have a look at this double jab coming up, Jim. Ben's jab is working so well, very accurate, very controlled, his chin's down. Bang, bang, two perfect left jabs. This, this is a second ace. You, it comes in there, Ben. You've got a, a little counter-attack coming in by Wharton. Not enough from Wharton, Reg. A couple of punches inside, but not enough. Ben's work is always looking better. there by Mr Mancini and a few uh, half words in the air there it is, you go and do it or else five that's the corner man's job there, especially with experience, bit of a think tank there in Morton's corner and it's, it's also being matched by Jimmy Tibbs in the other corner lovely punch from Ben yeah, right through the middle there, right above us I don't know if this is part of Wharton's tactics Reg or if he's frozen a little bit He's certainly not really get down to what yet. Oh, well, a little bit of an armistice there. Sorry about that. He brought him onto the race right in after him. Now, this, uh, to coin your phrase a lot now, Jim, Ben sort of fancies the job a bit more now, doesn't he? He wants to start steaming in a bit. You know, he doesn't really want to change what he's doing. If he can win rounds in a 12-rounder without wasting any punches, without exerting yourself over the... Yeah, that's what you want to keep doing. Nick every round you can, then when the reach is the hard part, you've still got something left. But Wharton is the one who really has to get down to work. He's been doing nothing. Okay, right. Throwing some punches up close, but he has to do more leading off. Has to get, get his own jab working. It is a big, big step in experience and ability here, isn't it, uh, by Wharton? A lot of signs, Reg, that Wharton is frozen a little bit. I mean, he hasn't been prepared to, to take the fight with the scruff of the neck and take it to Ben, and that's what you must do. When you're having a big puncher, you must try to back him up. What has never once tried to back Ben up. He's allowed Ben to control the action, and he's winning all the rounds. Yeah, and he's hanging on there too, like a limpet with the right hand uh, arm, I should say, Wharton. See, even when Wharton throws a punch, you can see he's still thinking about defence. As soon as the punch is out, He's pulling his elbows in and his chin down. He's just paying too much respect to Ben at the moment. A minute to go in the fifth round. WBC version of the Super Middleweight Championship. from the audience there's quite a they've really come down in the coach loads and bus loads and or probably caravans too because he comes from a travelling family born in Leeds and raised in York see what hasn't really let any full blooded shots go because he's almost on the defence he's almost reacting to what Ben's just done so he's not really setting himself and getting the full power into his shots he really has to think about leading off if he wants to get into this fight signaled out here, yes, he considered that a knockdown, although Ben uh, complained about a punch on the back of the head, but it's apparently he thought a left hook, 
just before that, and he's called it a knockdown now. But that's what Watt needed words, he needed something to get his heart into this fight, and now we'll see if he pours heart and soul into what's going to happen now. He really has to waken up his ideas. See, the, w the WBC always say to the judges, you've got to take a point off a man scores a knockdown. I don't necessarily agree with that. Oh, a different man altogether has come out to start this round, Reg, from Henry Wharton's corner. Now he fancies the job. Signs of a good uppercut there from them, wasn't it? And there, the left hook took. He takes a punch well. There has done in the past, Walton, anyway. He's got still gym to match the heart, I think. Now we're getting some. Uh, reaction from the Wharton supporters having seen that well maybe it was disputed knockdown as far as the judges are concerned they've got to go by the referee's instruction yeah, the right what? hand there not the left hook that he's talked about yeah but he's coming back with full bodied counters now he's not just kind of chapping inside as he was earlier now he's getting power in his punches now Ben has to think a bit more about defence They're getting stiffer for round by round, these punches, aren't they? Oh, they got a rule with that, but it actually went past. And I lost his composure a little bit, Reg. He's building forward now. He's not putting the same thought into his boxing. He's just putting his forehead down and kind of pushing himself forward. It's not the thoughtful boxing we saw in the first four rounds. Behind the jab! Behind the jab! Oh, long right hand there. That got home. And almost after the bell, that one. It's okay. They're matey about it. That's a good sign. It was right on the bell anyway, and as I've often said before, sometimes you can hear the bell watching at home, and it uh, can't be heard in the arena, although that, that bell was very clear to everybody, I think. So now, this is what we want to see, the knockdown from the round before, Jim. Ah, oh, the left hook, it was, you see that he was stumbling a bit there, and then he got caught. That's it, now the next punch, that one, pitch him on the back of the neck, but then he still regards as a knockdown, the referee, you agree? Yeah, this, well, is, uh, this is the end of this round before you answer that. That's the left on the right, right got away with it. A cracking punch that. Ben's left still working well, but he's a little bit more careless in that round we've just seen. Corners, ten seconds. Would you have considered that a knockdown, Jim? Yeah, I think so, Reg. It was Ben's fault that he's, he got caught in the top of the head because it was bending down low. Right, round seven. Got it a bit closer than I have actually there, but then again, deducting the point line out of there. Barry McGuigan's very unofficial, of course, got Ben uh, one round ahead or one point ahead. I wouldn't have scored the 10 here round there, uh, I think I'll just uh, give that to Watton the 10 9. I don't think he was clearly winning the round uh, before the knockdown, so I've got it slightly more in Ben's favour. But the main thing is, Watton, for his own point of view, has gotten so back into the fight, he's letting punches go and full bloody shots at that. touch his shoulders and forearms in those clinches. 
still good jabs from Ben. Yeah. Not controlling the fight the way it was earlier, Reg, but still jabbing well, but Wharton right back into it now. He does hang on tight with the right arm there, doesn't he, Wharton? I don't blame him. He's protecting his ribs as well and trying to stop Ben from punching inside, but the referee's got to break them. He tried the uppercut there, Jim Wharton. certainly reverted to his amateur style of doing a bit of boxing as well as the, the punch power there, Andrew Ben. It goes the gun shield. Yeah, the referee will have to pick that up and stop the bout at the appropriate moment to replace that. Yeah, that was a good time. Yeah, they, he'll do that now. It's a medical rule. He's just kicked it back to the corner as well there, Wharton. So they have to wash it and put it back.